Well, I found it needlessly reductive, hardly befitting one such as... He whose name is Oblivion, the Forgotten One, sleeper beyond the gate of silence, and sensei tongue of the umbral void, but I'm sure Brother Codex would disagree. Honestly, I hardly noticed a difference. Hey guys, Dantix here. Guns, Love and Tentacles, The Marriage of Wainwright and Hammerlock is the second paid DLC for Borderlands 3 and with it comes a point I don't really want to dance around. Yes, it's about a gay wedding. Yes, it's in a game about killing things with your sweet, sweet loot. So is this DLC worth a look? If you've held off buying Borderlands 3 until it hits Steam or lowered in price, should you check it out now? Before we start this video, if you're considering buying this game, follow the link below as it'll help the channel and me out a lot, or you can find your favorite content creator and follow their link. So story-wise, Guns, Love and Tentacles has you traveling to an exotic, be it creepy as hell, frozen world wherein a giant vault tentacle monster is laid to rest. You're there to attend the wedding of Hamelock and Wainwright, characters you've come to know in the base game. My initial thought was, do we really need more of this? In the base game, they really hammerlock in the fact that these two are in love. Really hammerlock it in. There were, there were multiple echologues with no other relevancy than to explore their love repeatedly. If this was a stray couple, I would have been sickened. There we go again. But if I say the same thing here, I'll be ostracized. So just know I don't like PDA all that much, be it gay, straight, pineapple, or whatever, especially in a game where I'm playing to shoot things. Did we really need to make a whole DLC around love to make a point? So I went into this DLC expecting to hate it. I, I didn't, really. Not because the love aspect wasn't there. Oh no, no, that was there and that was the central theme but because it had just enough of other things to make it make sense. The missions were fun and interesting, the enemies were different, and the locations, well, the location is exactly what Hammerlock's character would want for a wedding. Adventure, excitement, lodges and hunting. I was immersed more than I ever was in the Moxie Heist DLC, and in this way, I found Guns, Love and Tentacles the superior DLC. So during the base game, they twisted the knife a little into straight males, and that pun will make sense when you play the DLC, and they made them the butthole of the reductive jokes. Men are bad, blah, 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 blah. In this DLC, they stray away from that being the theme. In certain cases, they even celebrate other forms of love. The main antagonists are a straight couple, very much in love, and you do feel empathy for their position, and the game encourages you to do so. I just want to point out that this is literally the first straight couple shown in Borderlands 3, besides the old couple on Pandora in a side mission, which you help them build a turret for their homestead. So the, the second straight relationship in numerous planets you explore across the universe. Let that sink in. Granted, you have to destroy the bad guys and their love, but this is done in a way that shows respect to all forms instead of trying to elevate another based on who or what's involved. In turn, having a gay wedding seems more natural in the game and it seems less like it's there for political statement and more like it's there for how the characters just are. So bravo. At one point you have to harvest balls for strength. The game is saying testicles give you power and, and that's brave in the times we live in. There aren't any particularly reductive jokes in this DLC. The jokes are mostly still lowbrow though. And I did notice a missed opportunity, a distinct lack of tentacle porn jokes. Considering there were tentacles everywhere, this seemed like a conscious decision and a bad one at that. Fans would have loved it and the memes would have been made. Instead, I witnessed a lot of, well, borrowed jokes. There were many Futurama jokes repurposed and as a fan, I expected a little better from Gearbox. Anytime I hear a specific word, I go stiff as a board and fall over. Okay, I just gotta take a guess here. Antiquing? <laughs> ah, that was fun. Gage makes an appearance and well, she's extremely disappointing. She lacks her own unique personality and it seems as though they borrowed a bit too much from Tiny Tina. Besides that, Death Trap is her love and it seems to be the focus. Claptrap is as awesome as ever and goes on his little side mission which he updates you on as you play. 
It feels as though they could have included more characters that the fans have been itching to see, but we still have two more DLC to go. The supporting cast steal the show, especially the creepy but interesting Lodge Master and the barbarian jargon spitting hunter that you beat around until he's your friend. Even chatting to the numerous townsfolk was quite entertaining as they're all insane in their own way. So you crash on the planet, meet up with Gage the wedding planner, things go wrong and you have to fix it by hunting some beasts, making some new friends and taking out a cult. Gameplay wise you do this by shooting them, usually in the face. There's a ton of new creatures, one set resembling wolf packs, with a wolf taking point on high ground, howling to give the other wolves shields. Taking out this leader is a way to reduce the power of the total pack. Other enemies include the cult. I mean, the occult. <laughs> they comment on that being a point of difference. They come at you in really interesting ways. One occult member hides from you and spawns flying eyeballs that can destroy you with beams if left unchecked. The other can grab you with tentacles and pull you towards them. And of course, it's more satisfying than ever to kill them as they often say funny things as they die. I even found myself waiting and listening to a group of them talking to each other multiple times. I saw an echo version while doing laundry, but I got the gist. The gist? You got the gist of the Forgotten One's ninth idol on a loss listening to it on an echo. The bosses have interesting mechanics even through immunity phases. There are enough of them to keep you interested, but I won't comment on these for spoiler reasons. The sound design is, once again, amazing. There's a real ASMR feel to most things, from opening the lodge doors to popping heads off new enemies. You truly feel immersed in this creepy, unsettling atmosphere, and that's due to the sound and the subtle when needed and powerful when demanded musical score. There's even a mission focused around finding the perfect sounds for a music track for the wedding, and it highlights the effort that would have gone into capturing the sounds needed. Not, not to say that Gearbox sound team are out there capturing and recording mythical creatures to treat our ears, but it can't be too far from the truth. If you've played through Borderlands 3, the graphics are what you'd come to expect. However, the environments are different enough to keep you interested, from creepy buildings to frozen tundras to, well, you'll find out. That being said, the actual explorable areas aren't that big, around the same size as Moxie's heist if you remove the empty space. It doesn't feel like there are many areas to explore. Unfortunately, during my time with the game, I didn't find too many new and interesting weapons besides multiple Malawan shotguns, so I can't comment on the loot. Plenty of loot drops, but I need to play on a higher mayhem mode with a max level character to explore the end game more than I already have. That being said, the level cap has risen. This is a base game patch though, and now you can take your characters from level 50 to 57. The DLC is a perfect way to help you raise it. This also means my Zane had two capstone abilities and I was flying through the content extremely quickly. Granted, I moved my epic launcher save file to my Steam save file, so I wasn't as powerful as I would have been because I hadn't unlocked the ability to put points into Guardian ranks yet. But when starting a new game and jumping right into the DLC, which you can do from the main menu, content was much, much harder and it felt almost painfully slow to get through some enemies. I didn't play like this for long though and promptly transferred my epic launcher level 50 Zane to Steam, so I can't comment on the difference in length. All in all, to completely 100% the DLC, you'll need around 8 hours if you're at my skill level, so it could be slightly longer or slightly shorter for you. Which is one of the disappointing things about it. Just like Moxie's, the DLC is short and you'll have little reason to return other than to farm bosses. There are few crew challenges like Gages, which has you finding presents for the happy couple, or the Lodge Masters, which has you destroying statues of people who sling constant insults at you when you get close. You think you're such hot shit, but you're actually just lukewarm crap or Hammerlock's hunts, but these also don't extend the game much at all. These rewards are mostly cosmetic. However, when you combine the base game with the two DLCs and multiple free DLCs, this is now a colossal amount of content. In fact, if you were to start a new character and play through all the game has to offer, I couldn't recommend Borderlands 3 and the DLCs more. Check out my original review of Borderlands 3 and Moxie's Heist below to find out more. However, if you've already completed everything, Guns, Love and Tentacles might only sate your appetite for a few play sessions. I can't help but feel like they should have listened to feedback and included more to do end game. The free DLC end game content goes dry fast for me. So is the DLC worth a look? 
If you already have access to this DLC via a season pass, then of course it is. It's more Borderlands 3. If you would need to buy it or the season pass, I would say, wait, there really isn't enough here to justify the cost until the next few DLCs hit. I'm hoping they've changed their mind and aren't looking to make a DLC based on Ava though. More in the video below. However, if you haven't played Borderlands 3 and are waiting for a reason to play, I highly recommend giving it a shot if you enjoy any form of looting and shooting. It's out on Steam now and is truly a massive experience to get you through the quarantine. So in conclusion, the Borderlands 3 DLC Guns, Love and Tentacles is not quite enough as a standalone, but together with the base game, it makes for a fantastic experience. With all the extra DLC, free included, you're looking at well over 20 hours of extra content and much more depending on how much you want to farm those takedowns, which are the end game super hard missions. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked the video, don't forget to do the standard YouTube stuff. Most of you out there watching my videos aren't subscribed, so please consider doing that. Also, if you're planning on purchasing Borderlands 3, consider using my link. I hope you're all doing well during the lockdown and let me know below what you think and how you're pacing. See you soon, friends.